All right, then race equations, okay? So this is going to be a breakdown of all the equations you should understand and memorize and be able to use for the rate equations topic under AQA, A-level chemistry. So let's say we have an arbitrary equation here, a chemical equation, AA plus BB gives us whatever. We're not concerned with the products in rate equations. Uh, we're only concerned with the reactants here. So our lowercase values here that I've put in, this is going to just be our molar coefficients, okay? Um, which you'll, you, should, you should be aware of at this point. Now the capital values, this is going to be the atoms or the compounds, whatever it may be that we're concerned with. Okay then, so how do we use this? Now, let's write out our rate equation. So if you're not too familiar with this, I'll, I'll break it down for you. So it's going to be our rate. This is just our rate of reaction involving our reactants here. This is going to be our K. Um, this is going to be our K, which is our rate constant, okay? It's gonna be a constant value. Uh, multiply our concentration of A, whichever, whichever compound this is or atom this is, to the power of M. I'm using this arbitrary value M here. Don't get too confused. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, multiplied by our concentration of our uh, reactant B um, to the power of N. Okay, so what are these What are these weird things here, M and N? What does that mean? Now, don't get this confused here. The reason I use lowercase a and lowercase b is to make sure you understand that these two values, which we uh, put to the power of, does not refer to the molar coefficients, okay? It does not refer to that. It's very different to our kc and kp, etc., where the powers that we put in the equation refers to the molar coefficients. This isn't the case here, okay? These values are what we call orders. So if you've done any questions or if you've done this topic, you should be familiar what orders of reactants are. Um, so we'd have our concentration of reactant A and then the order of that reactant as the power. So the only powers we need to be aware of or the orders that we need to be aware of are 0, 1 and 2. Okay, Zero order, first order, second order. Not too complicated. Now, we can't get these values um, from just calculations. They have to be worked out experimentally. So normally in an exam, you're given some sort of data table with concentration changes and rates of reaction. And then you also, you either have to plot that on a graph or you're given a graph um, and we have to work these out experimentally. So then units, let's look at units real quick. So rate then, this is going to be a change in concentration. So that's going to be our concentration units per unit time, so change in concentration per second, okay? Now, this is normally what it's written as, it may be ch uh, change in volume per second or something like that, but normally it's gonna be a concentration change per second. So that's not too complicated. So the units for this won't normally change. What changes is going to be the units of our K, our rate constant, okay? So, um, as always, concentration, both of these guys, A and B right here, so it's going to be moles per decimeter cubed. And that the reason for all that is because we want to make these the same so there's no sort of errors in our calculations. Now, as I said, units of this don't really change. However, the units of this can change, okay? So what we have to do then is we have to rearrange it to make this the subject in order to calculate what the units are. And with units, for example, because everything is regarding concentrations of reactants, it's normally going to be, let's say, for example, um, this value here, the M was a two, and this N value here was a three. What it would simply be is, if we rearrange this then, it's going to be K, it's going to be K equals rate, divided by our A and B concentrations, so A squared, B cubed, okay? So then, if I just make some extra space for this, chuck it over here, we would have our rate concentration, which is going to be moles per decimeter cubed. And then we would have five lots of moles per decimeter cubed in total on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do then is just write out moles per decimeter cubed, uh, just for one of them. And then I'm gonna put moles per decimeter cubed to the four. And then what we can do is simply cancel these two out. Oops, I forgot there's also a per second here. So therefore it's going to be moles to the four, and then we have to times the decimeter cubed by four as well, so it's gonna to be to the minus 12. And then we're actually gonna flip that up to the top of the fraction here, boop, and that's going to become mole to the minus four, dm to the 12 per second. 
All right, so that's how you, it's just a real quick example of how you would cancel units and work out the units of k. Now, in reality, it shouldn't be written like this, but AQA accepts it. In reality, it should be decimal uh, to the 12 per mole to the 4 per second. All right. And let's say, for example, in a question they ask for, what is the total order? What is the total order of reaction? So all you do here is you add up what this order is, what this order is, in which case it's 2 plus 3. Therefore, the total order is 5. Easy peasy right there. Okay, so next up, Arrhenius. Now you may be thinking, Arrhenius, we don't have to know that. It's given in the exam. Yep, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's given in the exam. However, what I want to briefly cover is how we can equate it to the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. Because this is new to the specification, they're going to throw it in. They love it. They've been going mad for it. Okay, so um, uh, not that one. Let's draw this one. So uh, what is our Arrhenius equation then? So our natural log of k equals our natural log of a minus um, it's going to be our Ea over Rt. So don't get co too confused with this. This is given to you in the exam. You don't really need to know it, although it's useful to know what these values are. Now, I'm going to quickly mention something. Energy and energy. These both have energy units. So activation energy, we can pick our units for this. So this can either be joules or kilojoules. doesn't really matter. It's just an energy value. However, our gas constant is going to be joules per Kelvin Per mole. So we have some issues going on here. We either have to make this value kilojoules or we have to make this value joules, okay, and then convert as needed at the end. Now, that's sort of the units out of the way, but I wanted to go over the y equals mx plus c expression um, and how we can equate the two then. So normally, let's write this out then. So normally, what's going to happen is if I draw a quick graph out here, on the x axis, we're going to have 1 over t, our temperature. And then on the uh, y-axis, we're going to have our ln of k. Now, if we draw this out, our gradient here, let's say our gradient is always going to be negative. Now, how does this work? So if we write out our equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. Let's rub all this fancy stuff out and so I can uh, draw the equations together. Ooh, there we go. OK, so then y is just going to be our ln k, which you can actually see here is on the y-axis on the graph. Again, 1 over t. So what we can do here is we can actually split this equation into two. So therefore, if I split that into two, um, it's going to be minus Ea, uh, Ea over R. Um, so this is a capital A here. This should, shouldn't really be like that, to be honest. I'm going to rub that out real quick. You'll see it as a lower subscript capital A, or you'll just see it as a lowercase a. I'm going to keep it as the lowercase a for now. Um, over r. So that's one side of the equation. And then we're splitting this here. So it's actually, we're taking this to be a new fraction here. So it's just going to be 1 over t. So therefore, it's going to be minus ea over r times 1 over t. So that's going to be where we split this up into two separate equations. And the reason for that is because this is one fraction here, but we don't want that. We want to equate this to m times x. Therefore, we have to split it up. So then, as I mentioned, um, our ln k is our y, our ln a then, that's simply going to be our y-intercept, so where the gradient crosses the y-axis, uh, and then our mx then, so m is going to be our minus ea over r, and then our x then is going to be 1 over t, uh, which we can see right here. And what this allows us to do is that if we can um, use our change in y over change in x, is our gradient, and this equals minus Ea over R. Normally, what they want you to calculate is our activation energy. If this entire fraction is our gradient, if we want to calculate what this is on our, on its own, we're simply going to times by the uh, gas constant, and this is going to give us our activation energy. Now, our gradient here is going to be negative in all these graphs because we're having a graph that's going down right here. So it's going to be negative. Therefore, if our gradient is negative, we can just cancel it and make it so that our activation energy is positive. So it doesn't matter if our gradient is negative. We always want our activation energy to be positive. So just be aware of that. Gradient is normally going to be negative, our minus Ea over R. However, we can just make it positive here because our activation energy is never going to be negative. We're not going to be getting a negative amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. 
So then, although you don't need to know and remember this equation, I recommend just getting very comfortable with it um, and understanding how we can equate it to the equation of a straight line. Um, be aware of all your graph content. I'll be making videos on that shortly. Um, but do your best to remember this equation right here. Pretty simple once you've done a few practice questions with all the tables where you have to look at which concentrations change, which concentrations don't change, what are our rates and so on. So hopefully this was a useful video. Be sure to like the video if you found it useful, if you learned something. Hopefully you did. Subscribe for future chemistry content. It really helps the channel grow. Best of luck in your upcoming exams. Peace.